What's up, beautiful ladies and handsome men? I am not sure what's true or false in this story. I take gossip, tea, rumor, and scandal from yesteryear, from online, from word of mouth, from books, and I ball it up and I tell you guys a story. Now, let's get to it. Now, the word on the street say that somebody been walking around here smelling good enough to eat. All right, it's me, sis. I'm somebody. Because you know, Scentbird give me right every month. And Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try out new designer fragrances each and every month. This month, I got Milk by Commodity. Honey, this smells like vanilla and baby powder and cedar wood mixed together. Florgasm by Heretic. This has a grassy aroma mixed with lemon. Got me some Amour by Vince Camuto. Baby, this smells like fresh flowers and passion fruit mixed together. And Just Bloom by Story Veneziani. Now, baby, this floral goodness, this is the one that's going to make folks think you just came back from Italy on your million-dollar vacation, honey. Oh, it's banging, honey. Look at here. Look. Y'all see it moving? Look at all this doggone perfume I get. Lasts way longer than a month. Honey, it just ain't no reason to smell basic when you can use Scentbird. Especially when you guys could click the link below, use my code and get 55% off of your first month at Scentbird. Honey, that's around $8 for your first month. Go click the link and order now. This video has a helmet warning, guys. You may find some stuff disturbing. So either you want to put on your helmet or you may want to exit the video because a lot of things happen in this doggone video. Okay, let's get to it. Now, baby, listen, y'all talking about a scandalous and reckless life? Barbara Payton had it. She puts Marilyn Monroe, Joan Crawford, Jane Mansfield, all of them bad boys to shame. Come on, baby, let's get started. Barbara Lee Redfield was born on November the 16th, 1927 in Cloquette, Minnesota. Her mother's name was Mabel Irene Redfield and her father's name was Erwin Lee Redfield. And for a time, her father owned an ice cream business and some sources say he may have even had other businesses. Now, Barbara's parents were all smiles to the outside world, but uh, gossip claims that in the home life, her parents drank a whole lot. And even worse, her father, Erwin, would become abusive to his wife, Mabel, whenever he got drunk. And as far as the children, whereas Erwin didn't really pay much attention to the children, Mabel put all of her attention into the children. And this most likely was Mabel's way of getting away from financial stress as well as getting away from the stress of her abusive husband. One of the things that Mabel show enough enjoyed was the fact that she had given birth to an extremely beautiful child. And that child was Barbara. In fact, Barbara was so beautiful that it was nothing to hear people walking around town talking about that exquisite little girl that lives down the street. All of this attention that Barbara would get would make uh, Mabel very proud. You know what I'm saying? She was very proud to have birthed something so beautiful. And there's nothing wrong with this, nothing wrong with the mother being proud. But over time, some people have questioned uh, Mabel's proudness because some of that proudness might have led to uh, some unsavory things happening with Barbara. We'll talk about that more in a minute, but for right now, let's get to the child herself. Barbara was not a child who was unaware of herself or her surroundings, or even if she did start off unaware, uh, when she got around eight, nine, 10 years old, she was definitely not unaware of herself. And when I say that, I mean that she was not unaware that she was beautiful. She knew that the people around her admired her and said all of these wonderful things about that. And so uh, from a very early age, she acted like a very beautiful child. You know, she acted like the prettiest girl in the room. In fact, in later years, if she was not given the attention that she deserved, then she would do anything to get that attention. But for right now, we're talking about her childhood. Let's finish talking about that because baby, things went left very early on in Barbara Payton's life. Gossip claims that this child was so beautiful that by the time she was around 11 years old, she was getting attention from uh, adult men. And I'm not talking about 19, 20 years old. I'm talking about full blown middle age uh, grown adult men. She was getting this kind of attention. And if you thought Barbara was shy about this or shame about this, baby, no, you got another thing coming. She loved all of the attention because she thought this was okay. You know why? Because her mama made her feel like this was okay. It really became this weird thing of this child getting complimented by these grown men that was getting uh, Mabel's ego stroke because of that. So since Barbara thought this attention was okay, 
This meant that at a very young age, when other little girls would run away from certain things, Barbara would not, baby. She welcomed all the smoke and all the drama into her life. Just like this here. Gossip claims that when she was around 12 years old, James Cagney came into town. He was doing some type of show, and Barbara wanted to go so bad. Well, when she went to get a ticket, she did not have enough money because the ticket was like $1.25. There was this older boy selling the ticket. He told Barbara, mm, dang, you know, I really wanted you to have a ticket there's something else you can let me do and then I'll give you a ticket and so Barbara is like what's that he gets all cheeky and all mean and he tells her let me put my hand down your shirt and I'm pretty sure that the boy mostly didn't expect this to happen you know he probably mostly was saying this to shock little Barbara well baby turns out he was the one shocked and that's because Barbara said uh no you can't put it down my shirt but you can put it between my legs. Honey said the boy was stunned into all kind of silence, but you better believe that he took Barbara's hand and took her back in another room and did what she said he could do. After that, Barbara got her doggone ticket and this right here taught her something. It taught her that she could use her beauty and her sex appeal to get the things she wanted. And um, over time, Barbara actually got drunk with this type of power. She loved the way the boys phoned over her. Boys and men really almost lost themselves just to try to get next to her and now that she knew she can get gifts trinkets presents and everything else according to what she put out can a boy her age buy her shiny things can a boy her age keep money in her pocket it was men who could do that so this new and sexually charged Barbara kind of had everybody in their feelings honey she had everybody feeling the heat because she started a series of behaviors that was a scandalous thing child check this for instance when she was probably around the 8th or ninth grade, she was starring in a play. Well, in this play, I don't know exactly what it was about, but um, it involved Barbara playing the part of a wife and mother. Well, one of the scene portrays the husband coming over and giving his wife a peck on the cheek and then leaving for work. Well, honey, he comes over to give Barbara a peck on the cheek. She turns her face. This boy kisses her smack dead on the lips, and that is not the end of it. Barbara takes her arms and hugs it all around his neck and starts to really kiss him, like smooching him. Honey, they said the theater teacher flew over there like a bat out of hell, child, trying to break them kids up from kissing. And that is not the end of the rumors regarding these plays. There is another rumor out about another play that was being written for the school, and Barbara was playing the lead role for the female. Well, this role and this female, or the role that she was playing, I'm sorry, that female was kind of like, I guess, like an ugly character or in, in, in a wheelchair you know it just was not like a fancy type role well the writer of the plays that that school broadcast that writer was a local that lived in the town in fact gossip claims that it was this really nerdy type guy who worked at the post office didn't really have a life and he liked to write and so therefore he wrote plays for the theater department honey said barbara styled her hair all adult like remember once again this girl is probably like in the eighth ninth tenth grade somewhere around there styled her hair very adult like in fact i think she did it in an updo okay uh put on this very tight sweater and then had on this nice fitting skirt and then she took off walking for the playwright's house knocked on the door and was like oh hi mr so-and-so you know are you busy said the man was like well yeah i'm just kind of uh finishing up writing some things for another play well can i come in and then so he invites barbara in the door she gets to talking about how she loves the play that he has written but she's really having a hard time with this female character she just doesn't know how to bring it to life she wants to know if the playwright can change the girl's style you know take her out of that wheelchair make this girl vivacious and so the playwright is telling her like no if I do that the play won't work I can't do that well Barbara who has made sure that up under her sweater she does not have on a bra walks over to the playwright who is sitting down on the chair kind of leans over him and is like you know are you sure you just can't change it please you know i just don't get this said the dude started breathing heavy and he's like you know but i mean i can but you know it won't work I, you know i just don't know what to do said barbara stopped him i guess in mid-sentence and started kissing him baby 
fervently, deeply. Baby said when she got finished, the man started confessing all kind of love for her. Uh, I, I had been watching you, Barbara. You know, I know you're young, but will you marry me? Please, I, I didn't know how to tell you, but now that you've done this, will you marry me? Said Barbara kissed him again and was like, you know, uh, well, silly, first I gotta graduate school first. But, you know, can you please make this role a little bit better for me? Yeah, no problem, Barbara. I I'll change the role. And just like that, got what she wanted again. And then uh, left the man's house. I don't even know if she ever talked to him again. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, gossip claims that the guy was so scared and so shame about what happened, he actually moved out of town. He left that town hoping that nobody would find out what happened between him and this young girl. Barbara Payton was all over the place. Uh, gossip claims there was other times where her parents would come outside and find her sitting in the driveway in some boy's car, sitting in the car like kissing and necking with these uh, males. And as she got more and more out there, heck, I'm pretty sure that some females did not even want to be around Barbara Payton. Females her age, other teen girls, and it wasn't because like they were jealous of her or you know scared of her or anything like that. Um, they probably wanted to keep away for fear of bringing her to their house and Barbara's presence in their house, uh, possibly bringing out some hidden side of pedophilic behavior in their father. And this might sound silly, outrageous, or whatever, but baby, let me tell you, it probably was a very real concern because listen at this. Word on the street is that Barbara Payton had a big time crush on her best friend's father. A huge crush on this man. He was a very successful architect, I believe it was, and she just imagined herself with her friend father she told her friend about this crush you know they kind of just laughed it off the friend didn't think anything else about it but the father ended up having a celebration party at his house for himself I think maybe his wife uh, probably threw it for him whatever the case the friend's father ended up having this big celebration party at his house and Barbara was invited to this party what well, the folks say that everybody at the party including the teenagers all started drinking you know everybody's having a good time everybody's letting loose somewhere along the night Barbara had to use the restroom. So she goes upstairs to use the restroom, but when she turns the knob, it's locked. And so she just waits by the door, you know, waiting for it to open. And when it does, it is the friend's father. He straightens out his clothes and he looks up, he sees Barbara, doesn't say a word, grabs her by the hand and jerks her into the bathroom and closes the door. As soon as he does, he is kissing and rubbing and touching her all over. Before you know it, this man has taken her inside of the empty bathtub. He's taken her and done the things to her. After it's done, Barbara gets up, you know, she fixes her dress back and she goes back to enjoy the party right along with the man's wife and her best friend and everybody else that's there. And the man doesn't say anything either. Well, Barbara is a little bit giddy to have had this happen with her crush, even though said crush was 45 years old. And Barbara, by the way, was uh, 15 years old. But then her little tail was sitting up there looking crazy because about two days later, her friend called her, the best friend, and was like, you know, Barbara, you know, my house is going haywire. All of a sudden, my father then woke up and he didn't cuss my mama out and told her that he don't want her no more. You know, he's found somebody else and he is deeply in love and he's gonna marry this other woman. You know, I wonder who this could be. Honey said the hair stood up all on Barbara's neck because um she didn't want to marry this man. You know what I'm saying? She was just having fun. This was just the older guy that she liked, she did some things with, but she didn't want to marry him. She had her whole life ahead of her. So Gossip claims that uh, Barbara ended up calling this guy while he was at work in his office and she told him, you know, thank you, I had such a great time, but I'm in love with somebody else. I'm in love with a boy my own age. And child said the man started crying and everything, honey. Talking about, but Barbara, I love you. And Barbara was like, you know, I'm sorry, I just can't do this. I'm in love with a boy my age. So Barbara Payton, she was something. And this is the way she operated. Whether it was young boys or young men or old men or whoever it was, you know, if Barbara wanted it, she went and got it. And even though Barbara didn't want to marry that particular guy, uh, there was this one guy that she did want to marry. He was this very handsome man and his name, or everybody called him, Captain Payton. And if I'm not mistaken, I think he was a captain in the Air Force. He probably was around 21 years old and Barbara was 17 at the time. And they started talking and dating and then um, they got married. Well, after their marriage, Barbara begged her husband to take her to Hollywood. So finally, Captain Payton was like, okay, cool, baby. We can go to Hollywood. And he took her to Hollywood on their honeymoon. Barbara gets there and she transforms into a whole new person. She starts to act 
like a star. She starts to feel like a star and this is what she wants to do. So after four days in Hollywood, her husband tells her, you know, it's time to go. I really need to get back to my military post. And Barbara tells him, no, you know, you go baby. You go back and go check in and everything. And then I'm gonna stay here for a few more days and then I'll be back down there. Well, a few more days turns into several more weeks and Barbara ain't took her little tail nowhere. She's still in Hollywood and uh, now she's actively searching for different roles. You know what I'm saying? She's trying to talk to casting directors. She wants to get her foot into the door. And if I'm not mistaken, probably after about three to four weeks, she did end up getting a screen test. I think that screen test went uh, pretty well. And then she ended up getting another screen test and Barbara walks in and she gets in front of the camera throws up a little bit and faints almost dead to the floor. The casting directors send her to the hospital and after about a day of Barbara convalescing, uh, the nurse comes in and tells her, congratulations, you're pregnant. Barbara is mortified, absolutely distraught because she felt like I was just now getting my foot in the door. So she took her little behind back home with her parents. She ended up giving birth to her baby, which was a son. And Captain Peyton was thanking his lucky stars. You know what I'm saying? His wife has become a mother. You know, Hollywood is now out of her head. Baby Barbara kissed that baby on the doggone forehead, left that child with her parents and took right back off for Hollywood. This time around, things were even tougher for Barbara than they had been the first time around. But lucky for Barbara, even though she had given birth and had a baby, her voluptuous yet very put together figure was uh, still there. So this allowed for her to get multiple modeling gigs, but not only that, it allowed for her to get mega attention from all of the high rolling Hollywood players. Baby, I'm talking about actors, producers, directors, whomever. Barbara was getting that attention. And so Barbara figured, you know, why not make this work to my advantage? So Barbara became an escort. And being a beautiful, gorgeous lady on a rich and famous man's arm, oh baby, this is something that Barbara relished. Rumor has it she dated Clark Gable, John Ireland, Howard Hughes, even tough guy Mickey Cohen. And she had to be good at what she was doing because baby, just by her pillow talk and actions in the bed alone, that led to Barbara getting a contract with Universal Studios. But here's the thing with Barbara Payton though, and this is something that I just don't understand. This woman couldn't just get stuff, like get her achievement and just leave the craziness alone. She had to continue the craziness and this would mess her up. Just like with this here, Gossip claims that the way that she was able to get this universal contract is because she was messing around with Bob Hope. As a matter of fact, she was like Bob Hope's main mistress. This guy set her up in a beautiful little love nest, purchased all of the doggone furniture. Baby said he got her a double king size bed just to make sure they had room to do what they was gonna do. But what I'm saying is that he kind of, he took care of her the way she needed to be. Baby, why come Barbara talking? talking to everybody and not only that asking Bob Hope for very large amounts of money super large amounts of money and so the studio Universal who he was also signed with uh started to get nervous because Bob Hope was very married so they started to get nervous and so they ended up dropping Barbara from her contract and when the studios dropped her she could no longer make her own money so she really started depending on Bob Hope and like I said she was asking him for very large amounts but once she got dropped by the studio uh Bob Hope's started to kind of distance himself from her, especially when Bob Hope would travel around the country, sometimes alone, sometimes with his family. Baby, why come Barbara Payton would show up wherever he was at, begging him for money and stuff like that? Honey, they said the very last time he cussed her behind clean out and told her to leave him alone. He was through, she wasn't getting another dime. And instead of this teaching a lesson to Barbara Payton, this was fun. She found this exciting. This had turned into a game for her. It was one actor where he bought her a $6,000 car just for her to sleep with him. And then the next time he came around wanting to sleep with her again, Barbara was like, well, what you gonna buy me this time? And he got upset and cussed her behind out and she never saw him again. And I haven't really given any time frames for you guys, but all of this stuff is happening when Barbara is like 18, 19, 20 years old, right in that area. By the time uh, 1949 came around, she was 21 years old. And this is when she got her first starring role in a movie named Trap. And guess what happened? 
Barbara got on set and started messing with a freaking extra by the name of Dunn Cougar, complained to Dunn Cougar that she did not have no money to pay her rent and now her landlord was trying to put her out and all this good stuff. And baby Dunn Cougar, who was a tough guy, went and beat the brakes off of her landlord. Baby, he was swinging that old woman from side to side. And yes, you heard me right, old woman. So right as Barbara's career was getting started, she was already getting negative press. The studios were already iffy as heck but they were like okay you know this fight happened this is bad publicity but we're still gonna keep her on because one of the biggest movies if not the biggest movie in her career was about to happen and that was a movie alongside James Cagney called Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. She kills it and audiences are mesmerized at this woman's beauty. She is the second blonde bombshell to ever hit Hollywood uh, behind Jean Harlow. Gossip claims that she also started having an affair with uh, James Cagney. After that, she starts in a movie named Dallas with Gary Cooper. Again, Gossip claims that she started sleeping with Gary Cooper. Baby started sleeping with her other male co-star in this same movie, uh, a man by the name of Steve Cochran. Steve Cochran used to have her behind the set bent over, Gary Cooper used to have her in the dressing room. And this right here was unseemly behavior, even for big time hoes, you know what I'm saying? This right here was a lot. But she was saved by the success of Dallas as well as Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. She even landed another movie role beside the well-respected Gregory Peck in a movie called Only the Valiant. Now, sources differ on this rumor. One story says that while they were shooting a scene together, Gregory Peck had his hand up Barbara's skirt doing some things to her. And then other rumors say that Gregory Peck did not mess with Barbara Payton at all. Now, after these movie roles with Barbara Payton's face being on the big screen, everybody in the world was pretty much able to see this beautiful lady. And so Barbara's dreams were about to come true, baby. All of her prayers were about to be answered because this very wealthy, very suave and debonair man stepped up to be her man. And his name was French Alton. Baby, listen, French Alton was from that old class of Hollywood wealth. He came up with Joan Crawford and Betty Davis and all of them. And Franchot came with it, honey. He bought her every jewel known to man. Whatever she wanted, she got. In fact, Franchot was in love with Barbara Payton. Like, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, she fine, she gonna be in my little boo thing, I'm gonna take care of her. No, this man was in love with her. He fell in love with her. So in no time, Franchot was asking to marry Barbara, and also he and Barbara were set to purchase probably what would today be like a million dollar ranch that they were gonna live on. Well, didn't work out. You know why? Because Barbara Payton is running around here like Ricky Bobby Daddy. Uh, you know, she just can't get right. She got casted in a new movie called Drums in the Deep South, where her co-star was Guy Madison. And Franchot started to feel the difference in his little young boo. You know what I'm saying? He started to feel like something wasn't quite right. And so what he would do was have somebody follow Barbara to her apartment. You know, he pretty much got a private investigator to spy on Barbara. Private investigator watches Barbara pull up to her apartment and then he watches five minutes later when Guy Madison pulls up to this apartment and goes inside with Barbara. So Franchot was like, screw this, I'm gonna show up. And that is what he did. He gets there, has a key to the apartment, bursts into the door and he sees Barbara and Guy Madison naked in the bed together. And this Barbara, uh, and Guy Madison, instead of him sitting up there being shame and apologizing to this man, he goes off. He's hollering. When French Shaw and Guy Madison were screaming at each other, all of the neighbors heard about it. So the very next day, a tabloid magazine had in big print that uh, French Shaw Tone and Guy Madison got into a screaming match and Guy Madison was in the bed naked with Barbara Payton. Horrible publicity for a rising beautiful young star. Now Franchot did end up uh, forgiving Barbara Payton, but the studios were not that forgiving. So they dropped her down from those A-list movies that she was making and they made her make at least one B-list movie. But this girl went from Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye to Bride of the Gorilla. And guess what Barbara did? Slept with two of her co-stars on Bride of the Gorilla. Slept with co-star Tom Conway and then the very scandalous co-star that she slept with. Woody Strode. Not only did Barbara Payton sleep with Woody Strode, uh, the movie cast, like the directors, producers, and everything like that, they threw a party. Barbara came to this party with Woody Strode. The studio head called her the next day and he went 
off. He told her he wanted her gone. She had no business parading around town with that doggone Negro. Well, it just so happened that around this same time, Barbara employed a maid, and this maid was half black. Well, guess what? This maid in her younger years had been a kept woman and she was kept by a bunch of wealthy white men. So Barbara gets to talking to the maid about the whole black and white issue. The maid ends up telling Barbara about this information and then the maid ends up naming off different men that she slept with. And what do you know? The maid says the name of the last man that kept her for about two to three years and the name is the same name as the boss of the studio head. So honey, Barbara is tickled pink. She cannot believe things have worked out like this. She asks the maid if she has any kind of photo proof or anything like that. And the maid says, oh yeah, I got pictures. Let me go get one for you. Boom, baby. So rumor has it that the very next day, Barbara went up to the studio before the studio head arrived and she left a picture of smack dab on his desk. Baby says she got a phone call so doggone quick. The studio head was like, oh, Barbara, Barbara Payton, please come into my office. I would like to see you now. Barbara got in there and was like, yes, sir, what you want? Dear, we all mess up sometimes. I forgive you. Hopefully you have forgiven me. Nobody needs to know about this, okay? And just like that, Barbara was back on her contract, but this was a lucky break. And after this lucky break, Barbara still didn't calm down. As a matter of fact, this lucky break gave her the ammo to keep on doing what she did best. Be scandalous, honey. The folks say that she started sleeping around with George Raft started swinging from the bedpost with Tarzan actor Johnny Weissmuller, became friends with Frank Sinatra, and then became enemies when he wanted to bust her all upside her head when he caught her in the bed with his wife Ava Gardner and caught Lana Turner in the bed with them too. Baby, as a matter of fact, some folks say that Lana Turner did get bust upside the head, said that the only reason Barbara Payton didn't is because she jumped out a window and landed in some bushes, honey. She did even more than this. One B-movie actor, Mickey Knox, had did an interview with somebody and he said that Barbara invited him to her bed and then she wouldn't let the man leave for three days. Said that she would even bring him food in the bed and she would just like be a kitten, you know what I'm saying? Don't leave, I need some more, I need some more and like this turned him on but he also kind of got scared after the third day because you're doing too much. And then in July of 1951, Something happened that would set Barbara's life on a uh, point of no return. She was in New York and she went to a pool party and she laid her blue eyes on hunky wannabe star because he did kind of star in some movies but not really good movies or maybe I should say B movie star. Tom Neal. Now, you know, Barbara has always been a sexually charged female. She walks it. She talks it. Well, baby, she said her whole body heated up so much so that she had to get a cold rag and some ice blocks to calm her down. Honey, she said that Tom Neal was the best looking man she'd ever seen. She said that he was a god walking on this earth. Even though Barbara had already been cheating on Franchot with a whole lot of other men. Um, after the Guy Madison situation, I think she was trying to be a little bit discreet about it so Franchot wouldn't find out. When she met Tom Neal, Barbara could not care less who saw her. This was the man she wanted now. This was her guy. So she pounced on Tom Neal. Gossip claims like an alley cat in heat, baby. They said that she spoiled him with her body. Uh, per gossip, Tom Neal was telling his son that, you know, Barbara was a, a type he had never encountered before. He said that this woman would bend over in public if he asked her to. You know, the car, movies, wherever they went, she was ready and willing to do whatever he wanted to do. And this excited him and drove him crazy along with other men. It drove them crazy. They just had not met a woman like that. So before you know it, Gossip claims that Tom Neal had moved into Barbara Payton's um, apartment and Barbara went once again, had forgot about French Tone so much so that Tom Neal would be sitting on her porch, no shirt on, like just lifting his dumbbells and Barbara Payton would actually be sitting in her yard butt naked sunbathing. Well, French Tone felt everything cool down when it came to him, so he sent his lookouts and his spies and they spotted Tom Neal. French once again, Barbara! This wakes Barbara up. She's like, oh my gosh, you know, 
I love Tom Neal. I want him. He's sexy. But my God, this man does not have money the way that French Shaw has money. So baby, uh, bye bye. And French Shaw, will you forgive me once again? Once again, French Shaw forgives this woman. Not even a few days later, Barbara was back messing with Tom Neal with no regret. In fact, this time while she was messing with Tom Neal, she was just like, you know what? I know French Shaw got money and stuff, but baby, this guy right here, he he's the one. He's the one. And so she uh, got engaged with Tom Neal. On that day before the wedding, Barbara was like, you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, I really love French Shaw. I have to go back to him. She got on the phone, called French Shaw up, and she and French Shaw met at a hotel and had an afternoon tryst, baby. After they do their makeup session, they go out shopping. French Shaw goes ahead and buys uh, Barbara furs, minks, whatever she wants once again. And so by the end of the day, they are coming home to her apartment. Well, Tom Neal is not French Shaw Tone. You can't just break an engagement with him and and be like, deuces, I'm not gonna marry you. I know our wedding was tomorrow, but uh-uh. You know, you can't just do that to him. He ain't a uh, French tone. He's not that forgiving, and he's not that cool-tempered. Honey, Tom Neal was waiting at Barbara Payton's house. French Shaw showed up in all of his classiness and highbrowness, holding shopping bags. Zippity doo da, zippity ah! Baby, the fist of everything rained down from the heavens, child, and not French Chalton off his feet. And then when French Chalton hit the ground, Tom Neal got on him, and I'm talking about went to work. He beat the brakes, pulp, and everything else out of French Chalton. Beat this man so bad that French Chalton was in a coma, whole head and face busted up, almost was beaten to death. This was a scandalous thing, child. And a scandal, child, a scandal. This was the top of it, honey. This made international headlines, headlines in other countries. It was terrible press. And the studios, their hands were tied. Even if they did want to keep Barbara Payton on, which of course they did not, you know what I'm saying? But even if they did, their hands were completely tied tied you have gotten a man almost beat to death and the world has already been kind of hearing about you uh going back and forth between these two guys because guess what every time you turn around you've had a marriage announcement to one of them you know all in the papers uh barbara payton about to get married to french Tom. barbara payton about to get married to tom neal and now one of the men has almost been killed the public was horrified. Can you imagine reading a headline that says that Don Cheadle has almost been beat to death by Michael B. Jordan over Regina Hall? Can you imagine that? No. And also you had those trashy magazines that was like, you know, uh, Barbara, we wanna take pictures of you. You are the girl that make men fight over you. So it was bad, like I said. And once again, uh, French Alton was in a coma for 18 hours in the hospital. And during this time, Barbara Payton was once again making headlines. She's showing up to the hospital with uh, martinis, bringing it up to his room. You know, she's so hurt. She has on her shades. You know, she loves French Al. Tom Neal, that big brute, did that to the love of my life. How could he do this? And everybody, when Franchot wakes up, I'm going to tell him that I'm finally going to marry him. You know, he's finally going to get his dream come true by having me. It was gaudy, it was trashy, and it was flashy behavior, and it was dead. And Hollywood, as well as the public, they, they just were not interested in it. You know, it's just, ma'am, you have overplayed your hand and overplayed your part. And then Barbara was not finished yet. After French Shaw got out of the hospital, they did end up getting married. French Shaw was happy that he had finally got the girl. Guess what? He and Barbara stayed at the very expensive Warwick Hotel, and um, French Shaw walked in the room and caught Barbara on the phone with Tom Neal. And French Shaw was very embarrassed by this, but yet and still, he could not let Barbara go. I don't know what that woman had going on, but it, it, it was a trap. It was a trap, baby, and she had it. But see, if it trapped French Shaw, then it was gonna trap Tom Neal too. It was July 1952. French Shaw felt the familiar coolness with him and his uh, new wife, uh, Barbara Payton, like always. He knew something was going on, so he sent a detective again. Honey, gossip claims that it's almost like Barbara wanted to get caught because uh, for some reason a window was open and what that private investigator saw and took pictures of shocked 
everybody who saw it. Honey said Barbara Payton was butt naked with a garter belt and bead zone down on her knees in front of Tom Neal doing the throaty body. That investigator took them pictures and he took it back to Franchelle Tone and French Tone was like, we gotta get a divorce. Like, this is not, this is not it. And so he and Barbara had been married only 53 days. Well, this didn't hurt Barbara too much because the whole time she had wanted to be with Tom Neal anyway, right? Well, the problem is, what was the problem at the beginning? Tom Neal does not have money and Barbara has now wrecked her career. Oh, it's over with, baby. No studio wants her after all of this mess. Now, when I say this, I'm talking about the main big studios. She did make some movies from overseas, you know what I'm saying? Or some really B-movie, C-movie type things. But as far as that doggone $10,000 a week contract, oh baby, that stuff was long gone. So she loses her money. And without money, and also due to the fact that Tom Neal and Barbara Payton always had a toxic love affair, they found out very quickly that they couldn't live with each other. You know, Tom Neal was violent, Barbara also was hot-headed. It was a mess. And so they only lasted one more year and they split up in 1953. After that, with all of this negative press still surrounding her and her ex-husband came with all of these stories, how she was a horrible mother, you know, and she pretty much had abandoned their son and she ended up losing custody to her son. Um, Rumor has it she did get remarried again to a young Hispanic guy by the name of Anthony Provost, or maybe he was a uh, Latin, I'm not sure, but his name was Anthony Provost and that did not last long at all. Then in 1958, at the age of 31, she tried to make a comeback in Hollywood, but nobody was interested. I mean, they just were not. It was pretty much almost like she had been barred from Hollywood. Here's the thing though, even if Barbara Payton did not have her film career, not have French Shaw, uh, Tom Neal, whatever, she still had those looks and she still had that high powered uh, sex drive that men loved. So Barbara hit the town hard and in a fury and she's at every club. Men are approaching her at the bar, offering her diamonds, you know, whatever she wants, just sleep with them. And she does it. She essentially turns into a high class prostitute. But all of these men who are paying her and giving her all of these high priced things, they have a fantasy of sleeping with a Hollywood star. So after a while, she loses that appeal because now you're just a good looking lady, but you're not a Hollywood star. So her prices have to drop. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's giving her diamonds anymore. She has to get like $500. Barbara leads a life where her diet consists of alcohol and drugs. Gossip claims heroin. So she's leading a hard partying, hard drug filled, hard drinking life. And that starts to show on her appearance. So after a while, her prices drop from 500 to 300. And now that Barbara is not getting that attention like she wants, now the guys are not offering her big money and everybody's not drooling when she walks by, she needs somebody to treat her like that. So now Gossip claims that she starts approaching young boys, you know, young guys, bellhops and stuff like that, approaching them and telling them that they can get some too. You know what I'm saying? She wants to feel wanted. That is where all of her worth has come from, even as a child. That is what she wants. So now she's approaching, like I said, bellhops. She's going to gas station attendants, things like that. These lower class young men that she feels like, hey, if the big boys don't phone over me anymore, these guys will you know these little broke guys well guess what these little guys don't have three hundred dollars either so uh slowly but surely barbara's price drops to one hundred dollars as a matter of fact rumor has it that there was this one man that was slightly important i don't know maybe he was really important but he had been sleeping with barbara over the years like he had been sleeping with her and his price was always 300 like he had always given her that at this time they had a session and when it was over with he gave her one hundred dollars and Barbara was like, what the heck? You know, dude, you usually give me $300. And he was like, yeah, but that's when I felt like you were worth $300. Like, Barbara, look at yourself. Have you seen what I see? I'm sorry, but now you look $100 to me, so there you go. And it hurt her feelings, you know what I'm saying? But he was just being real. Things got so bad for Barbara Payton that after a while, her prices fell from $100 
$50, $20, all that kind of stuff. She ended up living in this rundown little seedy uh, motel and she was hanging with a whole bunch of seedy, nasty, stanky friends, okay? And uh, rumor has it that one time she had a party in her hotel room, Barbara is naked, you know, she's woohoo, jamming and all this kind of stuff. Somebody calls the cops. The cops uh, show up, Barbara starts wrestling with the cops child, just butt naked, boosting and breast and everything hanging out. She wrestling with the cops and stuff. They throwing her upside down, TT all in the air. Child, just a hot mess. Another time, rumor has it that she was messing around with a black pimp and he got upset with her and he knocked her two fronts out of her mouth. And um, she went to the police station and they took pictures and just kind of documented how bad things had become for her. Like it was just terrible. She looked, she looked bad. After this episode and when she was turning like $5 tricks, Gossip claims that another one of her pimps got upset with her and he stabbed her in the stomach and like sliced her stomach from uh, right here all the way down, you know, basically tried to gut her. I think she had to have the 36 stitches, I believe. Whatever the case, it was a whole lot of stitches that she needed to sew herself back together. And she was beat, raped, and arrested several more times. Her life just went completely down the drain. And when people saw the pictures of her, like when she was arrested and stuff like that, they couldn't believe it. They could not believe their eyes. What the freak happened to her? And then in 1963, she had somebody write her biography or her autobiography called I Am Not Ashamed. And she admitted to a lot of scandalous, messed up stuff. It's, it's crazy. But, um, you know, people were like, you know, well, she should be ashamed. And then in 1967, Barbara Payton was found passed out in a parking lot next to a dumpster. And uh, somebody ended up getting her to go back to her parents' house. And they thought that her parents were going to kind of help her. But her parents, once again, were also alcoholics. So they pretty much just let her continue with her behavior because how could they stop her? You know, they wanted the liquor around too. And then on May the 8th, 1967, probably about two weeks, weeks after she came home with her parents um Barbara was taking a nap and then she got up from the couch and she was telling her parents that she didn't feel well something didn't feel right inside and so she went to the bathroom and gossip claims that her parents heard her moaning and kind of screaming out and then she collapsed and um she died right there on the bathroom floor she was suffering from heart failure as well as liver failure and she was only 39 years old and I gotta give a special shout out to um John O'Dowd he he is Barbara Payton's biographer and John I'm hoping I got all of this or most of this stuff right please don't be cussing me out or nothing like that but um I really really appreciate you for letting me use the images from your site and um also just all of this information you know he's done a lot of hard work again John O'Dowd he has written a fantastic book about her called Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye and he has way more information about the scandalous life that this lady Lady led than what I put in this doggone video so go pick that book up if you guys get a chance but outside of that I hope you guys loved and enjoyed this video I love you guys so much please go ahead and click like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video bye